Hey guys, Alex Khan here, and I want to show off my 118th scale die cast. The dagger, the this is the, uh, the very famous Tucker 48, in which only 50 or maybe 51 of these were actually uh, produced in history. Um, but yeah, the one I have right now is, uh, this one was made by Rhodes Signature, and I believe, uh, Yatming has her name attached to this, uh, die cast as well. So I don't really know who actually manufactured it, but, uh, let's, let's talk about this as I cut these, uh, um, strips off for packaging purposes. Oh crap, that's really in there, isn't it? There we go. But yeah, uh, this is one of those cars that I didn't really know about until I watched that movie, Tucker, A Man in His Dream. I saw that movie when I was a kid, so very long time ago. I'm, I'm pretty old. Uh, I can't take it off. Okay, let's take this one off. But yeah, uh, uh, Road Signature, uh, they released this uh, die cast in, uh, in several different colors. They had like a gold color. They had, uh, I think it was beige, uh, blue, maroon like this one, and then... Obviously, uh, Kyosho and American Mint had their own versions of this car, but I went with the, the road signature because uh, it just seemed more accessible to me. Hold on, let me try to take this crap off. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, the reason why I chose the, the maroon color is because that's the color that, that Tucker uh, uh, showed off in the movie when he first unveiled it to the public. And actually, historically accurate, that's the same color he used for the, for the Tin Goose car um, that was first uh, released to the public. And that was in Chicago at the, at the, Tucker, uh, the Tucker factory, which today is now a, a shopping mall. It's called the Ford City Mall, I believe. Because after Tucker took it over, uh, Ford got their hands on it. Hold on, this is going to be tough. And then after Ford... Uh, they it got converted into a mall at some point, but the name Ford stuck with it. But you know what's what's also cool about that factory? It actually started life off as a uh, a B twenty nine factory. You know those really awesome super fortresses. I think they even yeah they even carried the atomic bomb. But after the war, they didn't really have a need for something so big, so they got rid of it. And Tucker was the first one to jump on it. But I'm trying to cut these things off here. There we go. But yeah, uh, if you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend it. It's uh, probably my top 10 favorite car movies of all time. Definitely a car movie. Very, uh, very awesome. Um, but yeah, so as I was talking about, when he first un unveils the, um, his Tucker card to the public at, the, at, the, at, the, um, at his factory, it was actually known as the Tin Goose. The Tin Goose was different than the Tucker, the Tucker 48 that actually reached the manufacturing stage. Um, because his tin goose was uh, all handmade, it, it, was, it wasn't quite as clean as the one that they finally released to the public. It's kind of funny saying release to the public when there were only 50 of these made. <laughs> uh, but the biggest reason you can, biggest way you can tell the difference between the tin goose and then the other Tucker 48s is... The Tin Goose did not have a suicide door in the back. Um, the Tin Goose all had the uh, had the, the conventional door system, where they all open like like this door, you know, like the doors that we know of today. Um, oh crap! Did this break? Oh wow! Look at that. I'll have to glue that in later on. Sorry. Look, it's having technical problems, just like in the movie. Oh yeah, yeah. I want to talk about that scene. Um, in the movie where he's unveiling this uh, car, um, a lot of that was rooted in history because they had a hard time getting that, um, that car started. So in the movie, uh, Jeff Bridges is constantly delaying uh, bringing his car out. Um, and then I think what the movie shows might have been slightly different, but in, faith, in faithfulness, it was pretty accurate to what happened historically. Um, I read historically... Um, Jeff Bridges, not Jeff Bridges, uh, Tucker uh, told his band to play even louder so that they, they couldn't hear the engine problems that they were having behind, behind a curtains. And uh, I'm not sure if this part was true. Sorry, I'm not a car historian, but apparently this, 
the the tin goose could not even go reverse, or at least that's what the the newspaper said. And then so that really hurt Tucker's uh, the reputation of his car before it was even released. But you know what they always say, uh, you know, even bad publicity is better than no publicity, right? But yeah, the the, the movie is about uh, Tucker trying to get his uh, his concept onto the uh, onto the the drawing board, and then finally into production. And uh, the movie is largely about him making the car, the struggle that he had making the car, because a lot of his designs went out the window. Originally, this was called the Tucker Torpedo because it looked more like a torpedo, but what they finally got was this, which is still pretty uh, pretty space-age looking, but a lot of the features that he wanted didn't quite make it, at least in terms of the uh, aesthetics. Um, but what was I saying? Oh yeah, and then also part of the a big part of the movie was his uh, his legal problems that he had uh, with the court because they were uh, they were trying to nail him for for almost everything, just anything to uh, destroy him. Uh, the movie implies that it was the big three uh, car companies that was behind all this. I don't know if any of that is true or not. Not really sure, but a lot of that was suggested, even historically, that the big three was trying to squash, you know, the big thinkers. So uh, Tucker was basically the the underdog, and people cheered for him to get his car out. A little fun fact, uh, well, Florida, in in Tallahassee's car museum, they have a, uh, a Tucker 48 there. And... When I was traveling to uh, Tupelo, Mississippi, they had a working Tucker 48, which I never got to see. I contacted the uh, the museum as they were going out of business, and I asked if I could see it. The girl said no. Nope. And I said, oh, could you at least just park it by the window so I can see it? The girl said nope. She was not very helpful, basically. But whatever. Um... What else was I saying? But yeah, the the original concept for this car was very awesome looking, uh, like the sketch that Tucker wanted. But a lot of times that happens, you know, between uh, you know concept stage versus uh, production stage. I mean, at least this car made it to production, kind of. Uh, so um, in in the movie's um, epilogue, they talk about some of the uh, features that this car. Uh, you know, introduce that was, uh, that's still being used today. And let me see if I can remember. Uh, for one thing, it had a padded, uh, uh, dashboard for safety reasons. Um, also this, uh, front windshield, it was designed not to shatter. It was designed to, uh, break, like in, in the event of a wreck, it would just, uh, push outward. So it wouldn't kill the, uh, or it wouldn't hurt the, uh, the driver and the passenger in the front. Uh, also had, I'm not sure if this car had fuel injection, but in the movie he said he wanted fuel injection. Um, also, the uh, this one was a, a rear rear engine car, and in the movie they were trying to fight him on that even. And here's another thing: uh, there's a part in the movie where Tucker is feeling really uh, down on his luck, and then he meets with uh, I think it was Howard Hughes. And Howard Hughes tells him where he can get an alternative supply of steel to make his car cheaper. And also, uh, Howard Hughes told him about this this helicopter engine that he could use for his car. Because the big three in the movie was stopping Tucker at every stage. So, uh, Tucker ends up using a, a helicopter engine for his car. But they have to uh, figure out how to make the engine um, uh, water-cooled instead of air-cooled. So, uh, yeah, I, I freaking love this movie. And because of the movie, that's why I'm so into this car. Th this car has so much history behind it. And uh, that Tin Goose car that I was talking about, it's actually registered as the number five car for the, uh, for the National Historical Car Society or whatever. And again, the, the Tin Goose was different than the actual production Tuckers that came out. And <laughs> let me show you what all this looks like when you open it up. So here's the engine back here. Here's the suicide doors. 
can open up the uh, the hood, which has the the cargo space, and uh, we'll wait for it to come around so I can open up the rest of this car. But I gotta say, uh, for something so highly detailed and such, I feel like it's pretty good quality because of the weight on it. Like this was actually a really cheap um, uh, model to get because you can get the more expensive ones made by like Kyosho. But that's the key word, it's a lot more expensive. But for, for the money, this one's pretty darn good. Pretty good quality if you ever want to get one. Um, what I was hoping for though, I, I really wish they had the, um, the, the, the one in, in gray color. Because in the movie, uh, Tucker drives a, uh, a gray car later on when, he's, uh, when he purposely looks for the police and leads them on, on a little car chase. And yeah, that one was gray. And then they also show a, uh, a, a green one when they're uh, testing out the new helicopter engine. I, I wish they had the green one too. But the actual factory colors of this car, they had the waltz blue... Uh, which the movie says was uh, modeled after his uh, his wife's dress, apparently. Which I don't know if that's true or not. Um, they had a green. They had a green color. They had a uh, a uh, maroon color. They had a black color. And they also had a a beige color, for for the for the factory colors. I saw one on eBay which was pure white. They never, as far as I know, they never made a. A pure white Tucker, unless someone uh, repainted it themselves to that color. Hey, uh, I just, well, I didn't just notice it, but I'm just now talking about it. It's it's missing the the side the side mirror here, and this is supposedly brand new. Maybe it's in the box somewhere. I have to go look for it because that's really annoying not to have that one little piece because it's it's you know the details. And where is it at? Did, did it break? Break off? I'll, I'll, I'm gonna check the box. But uh, but basically, yeah, I I freaking love this uh, this diecast. Like, have you guys ever seen the movie Tucker, the Man and His Dream? Um, what did you think of the movie? Uh, what do you, what do you think of this uh, of the Tucker Forty Eight car in real life? And what do you think of this diecast? Hey guys, I, I went back to the uh, box and I, I did find the, the side mirror here. Here it is. That sucks, I, I recorded this whole video and it wasn't even on there. I think it might be broken off. Because it, it's not going back in. Dang it! Um, I'll just have to super glue it later, I guess. I don't know if that's gonna be a problem putting plastic into into the, the metal here? I don't know. Uh, I'm actually kind of disturbed by that though because this is, you know, it's part of the car's aesthetic. aesthetic. And Tucker would be very displeased if, uh, if this car didn't come with a safety feature like this. <laughs> there you go, let's go with that. So I'm gonna put this in the storage compartment here. If I ever look for it, I'll just have to watch this video and remember that I put it in the, the front, uh, uh, the front trunk. Take care, Tucker.